is where it all took place. Um, it was all around us. We have to be able to tell that history because it's history that happened right in our backyard, right where we live, right where we come to work every day. We literally uh, are in Black Wall Street. We are in the Greenwood District. Uh, we are on land that was bombed 100 years ago and the black community destroyed. Sometimes you just have no words, you know, of the emotions that you feel as to the history, what happened. This mural, currently located at the entrance to OSU Tulsa's campus, depicts the terror and destruction of the Tulsa Race Massacre, which occurred on this very street 100 years ago. Where 35 blocks of businesses and homes were destroyed by a white mob, and it took out the entire Greenwood area, once known as Black Wall Street. White men engaged in looting and burning and killing as many black folks as they could find. The most affluent black community in the country at the time was rubble. To commemorate the centennial, OSU Tulsa launched an initiative, 100 Points of Truth and Transformation, to educate the public on the Tulsa Race Massacre and inspire transformative justice. The 100 Points of Truth and Transformation were, uh, you know, 100 programs to reflect the century that has transpired, the century that has passed, and also um, to engage in programming um, both on campus and, and certainly with the wider community. The points include classes, workshops, um, series, um, it's been deliberative dialogue sessions, it's just been a combination of different varieties of events uh, from young age to older adults that could take advantage of the 100 points of truth and transformation. I led a writing on Greenwood workshop which involved you know, members of the community and I led them on a journey through the district. So I attended the Writing About Greenwood um, writing workshop with uh, Professor Q. So this was a class that was for me um, something that I wanted to do kind of as a way to process what I've been learning about the um, race massacre, what I've been learning about Tulsa's history and the black community. I employed many, many uh, archival photos from the Tulsa Historical Society's significant archive and asked the students in the workshop to place themselves in different situations in 1921 in the district from what decisions would you make, what choices would you make if you were confronted with thousands of, of white men armed coming to burn down your building, your store, your bank, your home. Learning about the race massacre has been something that I've had to deal with emotionally just like as a black woman in America, but also as a black woman here in Tulsa. Um, just kind of reconciling what the history for people who look like me has been in the city. Education is only part of the 100 points of truth and transformation. Some events focus on reflection and healing, like the Sunrise Vigil that began at 508 on June 1st. 508 is when the whistle blew and the mob took over and everything began. That is where everyone, they were fleeing for their lives. So we had the opportunity to actually relive that at 508. And it's so ironic that while we were in the middle of our ceremony and reading survivors' account as to what happened, we could hear the train, the train just going by, which actually allowed you to put yourself in the place of what happened over 100 years ago. You were actually reliving what took place. It was dark and it was very still. So that, I would tell you, is most significant um, workshop for me because actually I felt like I was there 100 years later. 100 years later, and there is still so much to learn about the Tulsa Race Massacre. We won't stop. The learning won't stop. We will continue to educate others as to what happened here on this land 
over 100 years ago. If we don't engage in tough conversations, if we don't engage in dialogue about the realities of our past and our present, how our past informs the present and how our present informs our future, um, if we can't do that honestly and openly, then we will be stuck. It's time for everyone to know that this was one of the worst massacres in history. And that knowledge, that history needs to be told. The truth needs to be told. But before we can tell the truth, we must first acknowledge that it actually happened. The truth can sometimes make you feel a little uncomfortable, but it is the truth. And that's how we work toward healing as well as transformative justice.